Hello and welcome to another edition of Business Weekly on City TV with me, Pius Amihe Ediku. Coming up in this edition, Vice President Dr. Baumia discloses plans by government to cut down the size of labor at the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority to reduce the level of human interaction. Also, U.S. Embassy in Ghana insists it owes the Electricity Company of Ghana for about two years now. Details of these plus other business stories coming up in this edition. In our first story, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia has told Business Weekly government will begin downsizing the number of workers to reduce the level of inter human interaction at the country's port. According to the Vice President, Revenue leakages as Ghana's ports have reached alarming levels due to the favorable conditions for corruption and bribery. Meanwhile, Dr. Baumia has stressed that government will undertake massive reforms at the country's ports to reduce the turnaround period for vessels from four days to less than two days. To the past sector now, where the U.S. Embassy in Ghana insists it owes the ECG for about two years now. Energy Minister Boache Ejaku had asserted that the inefficiencies in the power sector has led to huge unpaid debt which is crippling the sector. But the Public Utilities Workers Union Puru maintain that the claim are unsubstantiated. But in an interview with Business Weekly, the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Robert Jackson, said attempts to retrieve all bills from ECG have been unsuccessful. Meanwhile, government total indebtedness to the ECG has hit about 1.6 billion cities as at March this year. The figure increased by 15% from the 1.4 billion cities recorded as at the end of December last year. Still in the energy sector, Antalo Oil has told Business Weekly its 2017 production from the Jubilee Fields had least been affected despite the 40 turret bearing on the FPS Okami Nkrumah. The oil company was compelled to cut down its 2017 target by about 5,000 vials. But country manager for Talu, Charles Darko, tells Business Weekly he is optimistic of meeting the target. Meanwhile, Business Weekly understands that 10 oil fields is expected to deliver its first gas to the Ghana Gas Company by the middle of this year. Though it is later than the anticipated first quarter production, Talu says the increased supply of gas should increase power generation by the power plant. Also this week, the Consumer Protection Agency threatened of a demonstration in the next three weeks should government fail to address concerns of unfair treatment meted out to Ghanaians by the various embassies operating in the country. Citing various embassies such as the American Embassy, Canadian High Commission as well as the British High Commission, Chief Executive Officer of the CPA, Kofi Kapito Wusu Hines said, the development is also an infringement on the rights of Ghanaians. Responding to the concerns, however, the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Robert Jackson, told Business Weekly his outfit would not be found visa fees. Let's take you some news that happened during the week in the finance sector and the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, has stated that government $2.25 billion bond has begun yielding results in restructuring Ghana's debt. It comes on the back of a petition to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission by the minority in parliament seeking investigations into allegations of conflict of interest. Meanwhile, investment banker Mahama Idrisu tells Business Weekly there is a possible drop in investment to Ghana following increased criticisms of the government $2.25 billion bond. Now, disgruntled customers of ASN Financial Services have begun counting their losses as attempts to reclaim their money from the company have so far proven unsuccessful. The woes of the customers are heightening despite assurances by the management of dealing with the situation. Some have threatened legal action to the company failed to address their grievances. In a related development, the police have arrested two persons in connection with operations of Ponzi scheme MMM. Still on investment gone bad and the woes of DKM customers are still not over as some validated customers of the wild branch of the company have made fresh complaints concerning the mode of payment of their locked up cash. According to the customers, officials of GCB Bank paid them far less than the amount stipulated by the Registrar General's Department. 
Also this week, Senior Minister Yao Osafumafu disclosed to Business Weekly the past NDC government was unable to access grants and loans meant for development due to corruption and difficulties in sidestepping rules. According to him, an exercise he personally supervised revealed that the former government was unable to use about $2.9 billion given by donor countries and organizations. Mr. Osafumafu made the revelation at this year's National Policy Summit. Speaking at the same event, Finance Minister Ken Uvari Atta stressed that government's effort to stabilize the economy is to the advantage of local businesses and not to their foreign counterparts. We end with some news from the telecom sector and Vice President Dr. Baumia has announced that government is committed to meeting its November 2017 timeline for the implementation of the mobile money interoperability. The system, when rolled out, will allow consumers to transfer money across the various networks. Still in telecom news, CEO of Vodafone Ghana, Yolanda Kuba, has expressed worry over the huge number of taxes being slapped on the telecom industry. She believes the situation has contributed to the industry's current woes. It is unclear how much Vodafone spent on taxes for 2016, but checks reveal that its closest rival, MTN, the biggest telecom operator in the country, in 2016 paid government a whopping 1.1 billion cities in taxes and fees alone. And that is it for this week's edition of Business Weekly on CTTV with me, Pius Amihe. And if you join us next week.